Hey y'all, today I'm going on a tour to check out the BMA and murals around Baltimore City, East and West. This is the Baltimore Museum of Art. It has actually been around for a very long time, since 1914 to be exact. I remember the days in elementary school when we couldn't wait to line up and get on that bus to tour this. First up, we have The Thinker. The Thinker sculpture has been around for as long as I can remember. I was so pleased to see him still be in one of the first exhibits when entering the BMA. Artist Augusta Rawdon, Frenchman, created The Thinker in 1880 to 1904. It is made of bronze, although today time has cast a darkness that gives us a timeless entity of art that ignites curiosity of all sorts as we look at this life-size bronze sculpture from centuries ago. This gorgeous painting was done by Shirley Gorlick. She was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1924 and lived in Washington, D.C. until she died in 2000. She named this acrylic on canvas, done in 1971 to 1972, Double Libby Two. This particular painting that I'm standing in front of was made by Sam Gilliam, born in 1933 from Tupelo, Mississippi. The name of it is Blue Edge, created in 1971 and represents a burst of color, rings of noise, and the sound of music emanate from within. He used his jazz influences to elevate his works of art. He liked to listen to jazz musician, saxophonist John Coltrane and pianist Theonis Monk, which pushed his painting style to a higher level. He wanted to interpret a melodic mess, like hearing the instrumental battles of musicians. He portrayed a fight between colors with all trying to win. Although contained, this artwork is a powerful painting yearning to be seen and heard. The edge will not be forgotten. This sculpture is named Malcolm X number 15. I chose this artwork because I know who Malcolm X number 15 is referring to and I know what he represents. The artist, Barbara Chase Rabout, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1939. She used bronze with black patina, silk, wool, polished cotton, and synthetic fibers with steel support to bring her artwork to life. I think that this is a great interpretation of the strong black man who argued for civil liberties for all black people. He fought for black power, black self-defense, and black economic autonomy and encouraged racial pride. And now, my favorite exhibit at the Baltimore Museum of Art was that of Latoria Hobbs. She used wood panels to carve portraits of her experiences with family as a working artist's mother. It includes five scenes of one day. Her portraits remind me of my family, mom, dad, and kids interacting in an extraordinary way. It also reminds me of the way that I raised my own children, the values that were taught, this epic self-portrait exhibits Latoria Hobbs as an empowered, successful, in control of her identity and its expression as a black woman. She hand carves 15 larger-than-life cherry wood boards and later applies ink to the surface to create a series of prints from the panels. Then she prints the image on paper. She presents the panels themselves as paintings, transforming the original print making matrix from production tool to an art object. This really blew me away. A must see at the BMA. Let's get into these murals. So this mural that I found on Retreat Street at North Avenue was done by Stephen Ways. He started a fundraiser to create this wall art in 2019. It uplifts a young black female wearing hoop earrings. On the left side, there is a serene background of sunset, birds, and water. On the right side, a tornado of a promising future. It features a message that reads, Children of the Light Take Flight. He also included the names of those who donated on this artwork. This phenomenal artwork was done in 1992 and sits on the corners of North Avenue and Harford Road. 
However far the stream flows, it never forgets its source by Tom Miller. This painting has been updated twice to keep the mural vibrant. I love the message behind the black male figure with the open book looking toward a stream. I interpret it as, no matter how far you go, never forget where you come from. This artwork was done by Stephen Towns. This was one of my favorite murals because it reminds me of that special bond that's built between a mother and a daughter. I have three daughters and a granddaughter, so I can definitely relate to the portrait that exists at 1901 Pennsylvania Avenue titled Looking Forward. This magnificent mural sits on the corners of Fulton Avenue at Bruce Street. I love that the artist created an are they guards hands moment for some while others think it's just about family the artist used at least three sets of hands including her son i think that the bigger hands may be that of a man the middle represents her love with a red heart made from the inside of two sets of hands it says to me mommy got you and others have me and i love that and lastly, but certainly not the least, my favorite mural. Ramin Amenzada painted this mural in protest of police violence and deaths in custody. He dedicated this mural, which resides on the corner of Fulton Avenue at Presbury Street, to those who lost their life in police violence and to Freddie Gray, who was arrested on this street. I'm hopeful that, it's, that this mural will give our community some kind of peace because Freddie went to school with my daughter. He was a friend, a neighbor, a son, a brother. He was a young black man. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Have a nice day. Bye. Thanks for watching.